Thank you all for joining us here. We, we're, we're delighted to have you. Um, before I start talking about Chromebooks, I have a question for all of you. How many of you remember the first time that you saw the Macintosh? Quite a few hands in the audience. I, I personally remember it very vividly. I was, I was probably younger than I care to admit on stage, but, uh, but when I saw it, uh, my dad actually brought it home from work. Um, and my notion of a computer at the time was either something that I plugged into the TV with a joystick or that box sitting on the side of the desk uh, that had the blinking, that had the blinking uh, cursor in the C prompt. Um, and this completely changed my notion of what a computer was. And the reality is, is that it was built up over multiple years of a technological innovation. Everything from the microprocessor to the GUI to the mouse. But this was the first time it all came together in a, a package that was, that was pure to the whole concept. Um, and the, the biggest thing is that it gave you the idea that you could actually take your desktop, which at the time was the big wooden desk with your stapler and your typewriter and, and what have you, and actually move it into an electronic machine. And it was a big concept, and that's what has, has evolved quite a bit over the, over the years. So now we're here almost 30 years later. And what's interesting is we're at yet another juncture point uh, for that desktop. Um, if you think about it, over the last 15 years, there's been also this kind of innovation that's happened. There's the internet, there's ubiquitous connectivity, there's the browser, all of these things are coming together. We talked a lot this morning about cloud computing and what that's done for, uh, for the end user. But the amazing thing is that the desktop has not caught up with that. Um, whereas, for example, the cloud, you can access your apps anywhere, anytime, and your data anywhere, anytime. Usually with a desktop, you're bound to that one desktop that's sitting on your desktop or that you're carrying in your bag. Um, with the cloud, you have, you have this amazing ability to, that it gets better and better and faster over time. But your desktop is actually getting slower and slower and actually more antiquated over time. And finally, the desktop, we all know, is very, very tough to manage, especially in an IT setting. Uh, there's a lot that you have to do to manage your desktop. So it's time for, for that, that, that change because it, it sticks out like a sore thumb, almost like how that C prompt stuck out in the time of the GUI. So, Today, I want to introduce you to the Chromebook, the ultimate cloud computer. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about some of the things that the Chromebook can do to actually bring the properties of the cloud to your desktop. So we're going to demo a few things uh, uh, with the Chromebook. The first thing I want to demo is how quick it is to actually start. So if you take a look, um, it, we've designed it such that it can actually get, you can get in and get to what you want to do as quickly as possible. So before I even finished my sentence, we we're already booted up. We were already in and connected uh, uh, and ready to go. Um, I can log in with my Google Apps account or I can click on guest here um, and actually get in uh, quite a bit, uh, very, very fast just into a browser. And so I'm ready to go. So this was off of a cold boot. Uh, we were, we're, we're within just a few seconds in and ready to go. It goes to what Dave was mentioning about making the technology invisible. A few, of the, a few of the other things to make the technology invisible. In that time you saw, we were actually also checking the operating system. Um, one of the things we've done with the Chromebook is we've designed it around the browser. The browser is the thing that is on the Chromebook and everything goes to the browser. As a result of that, every time it boots, we can check the OS and make sure that it's not been Ill infiltrated and make sure that the user is protected. It takes the concept of virus protection and actually turns it on its head and makes the user a lot more secure so that they don't have to think about it. A couple of other things, it's always connected. Um, so it can connect via Ethernet and Wi-Fi as well as 3G to make sure that you're, you're connected to your cloud-based app applications at all times. Um, and, and finally, um, you have, this, you have a, 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 an experience where basically you are, you, you don't have to think about plugging in your, your laptop or think about any of the peripherals around it. So many of you, I'm sure when you traveled here, you were trying to find a, uh, uh, a charger somewhere in the airport or in the hotel or wherever you might be. This lasts for 10 hours on a charge. Um, I've taken business trips, for example, where I don't even take my charger anymore uh, because I can actually just rely that this is going to be charged up and ready to go. And so it really makes that technology invisible. But you know, if I were you, there's a question I'd be asking. And the question I'd be asking is, can a browser really do everything that I need within my business? Um, can it give you that same experience that, that you have with your desktop apps? So AJ and I are going to demo this uh, a, a little bit and show you a few aspects. So question number one that you probably should have is, can a desktop application be, uh, be as rich as a, as a cloud-based application? So if you can switch to the demo here. 
Um, so Dave mentioned a lot about HTML5. And with HTML5, there are a variety of things that it brings in. Um, if you asked me this same question three years ago, I would have told you browser may not be able to do everything that you need to do. But now, with HTML5, the browser has changed infinitely over the course of those three years. Multiple orders of magnitude increase in performance and a lot more functionality that's there. So we're going to show you one example here of a technology called WebGL. Um, and this is stuff that, is, that was never really possible um, in, in a browser before. But you have 3D graphics that are going on right here. This is actually real time pulling data from Google Books. And it turns out that you know, as much as people don't want to judge a book by the cover, they judge a book by the cover. And this lets you judge a book by the cover. And you can click into it. You can see it opens up. This is all pure HTML5, no plugins, no anything else. Um, and it gives you that experience and, and, and lets you see this. So, a second example that, that, that's more of an example that, uh, that, that you would see in, in, uh, in your everyday lives is the New York Times. And so with the New York Times, you have an application here that, that makes it seem much more like an actual newspaper. So we're all used to the New York Times website. But this actually lets you actually read the newspaper like you would an actual newspaper. And so AJ's going to actually scroll down to the, uh, to, to the photos section here. And uh, we're going to go and view some of, the, uh, some of the photos that we have here. Um, it makes it such that you have this kind of rich experience that you, wouldn't, uh, that, that you wouldn't expect in a web browser. And again, there's nothing but the browser. It's nothing but HTML. There are no plugins or anything involved um, in this. The other interesting thing about this is that this works offline. So one of the big questions we get about a browser is, can we have it, uh, can we have it available when it's, uh, when it's offline? Does this thing become a doormat when the, when, the, when the connection is gone? And the reality is no. You actually have a lot of applications out there and many more to come that will be available available offline. So a third site we're going to show you is um, it's a site that we have called html5rocks.com. And uh, it gives you a variety of samples of things that you can do that you can actually use in your own applications. Um, and we actually give you the source code along with it so that you can use it. Uh, it's amazing how quickly some of these things can be developed on the browser framework that's, uh, uh, that's available. And, and it gives you kind of that rich experience. So the second question I, I would expect that you would have is, OK, this is all well and good, but what about business applications? Does this really pertain to business applications whatsoever? Given that I'm making up the quiz here, the answer actually is yes. So, um, so this is an example of an uh, of, um, uh, uh, application called LucidChart. Uh, that's a cloud-based application that's available, um, that's available from a third party. And you can see what it is is that it, it gives you a lot of the things that you would expect with a graphing application, something like Visio, for example, but puts it completely within the browser. This is a fun example of, uh, of who Barack Obama is related to. That, it's probably a very interesting family reunion when they all get together. Um, but uh, we're going we're gonna to add me into here as well, because I want to be a part of this, too. Um, and we'll see who AJ actually um, uh, mm. uh, uh, puts see. me up against here. Um, so you can see that you're able to actually do a lot of the things that, uh, that, that you would typically do with a, uh, with a graphing application. And the speed is exactly what you, what you have. Wow, Sarah Palin. Yeah, pretty close. I'm pretty, I know. Uh, you, think think so. you can see the resemblance, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, this is, it's, you can do a variety of things with this, and it's just one of many things that we've seen pop up in the ecosystem over the course of the past couple of years. Um, so the third question you're probably asking is, okay, great. So you can do everything that you could, you could do on a desktop, but is that it? I mean, can you just get the parity on what's on the desktop right now? The reality is you can do a lot more. The cloud-based applications can be a lot more powerful than anything that you have on the desktop. And one of the things we're going to show you is, is one of my favorite examples, which is Google Spreadsheets. So Google Spreadsheets does everything that a typical spreadsheet will do. But then in addition to that, it'll actually do a lot more uh, that you wouldn't expect with a spreadsheet. So um, this, is an, uh, this is a form that's on a spreadsheet that, that, that we have. And we're going to show you uh, that spreadsheet. You can see with this spreadsheet, it's essentially taking form entries. And you can see as people are entering the form entries, you can see it populate on the side there. There are a couple of other interesting things with this. There's a column that has a non-English phrase. So what AJ is going to do here is use a Google Translate function that actually is a cloud-based function and, uh, and click, on the, uh, uh, click on the phrase that's there. And when he presses Enter with this, um, it's actually going to detect the language of the, uh, of the source. It's going, to, uh, it's going to go and it's going to put that into the, 
uh, it, it's going to figure out where that's coming from, and it's actually going to put in that translation there. So all of this could never be done unless you're using the power of thousands of computers that are there in the cloud. Um, and you can see, actually, when we drag this down, um, it'll actually do this for everything that, uh, that's there. Um, another thing that we can do is use other cloud-based services and connect these things together. So for example, um, you can actually choose all of some of the cities that are there and, and put this on the Google map. So these are things that you would never see within a spreadsheet, but we actually provide gadgets that let you do much of this directly within, uh, within a spreadsheet. And so in this case, he's going to go and he's actually going to choose uh, Google Maps. And this will take that, 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 those cells and actually map it onto, onto a Google Map and, uh, and make it such that uh, you can see that. So again, something that is using a cloud-based service that actually makes the application a lot better than anything that you would see uh, out there with, with a client-based application. And so the, 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 th the key thing here is that a, a, a cloud-based application can actually be more powerful than anything you would see on a desktop. So fourth question you should be asking is, what about those applications that I have that are not browser-based? So a Chromebook can, of course, connect to anything that's in, in the cloud. You can connect to browser-based applications behind your firewall and display all of those. But what about those applications that are not there? Um, the good thing is, the answer is, we have solutions for that, too. Um, you'll see a couple of links here. You'll see Internet Explorer, and you'll see Adobe Photoshop. So Photoshop is something that are more and more cloud-based versions, but it's a very, very complex application uh, that, uh, that's there right now. So this is using a, a product called Ericom Access Now. And what this is doing is actually loading up a Windows application that's running on a Windows desktop somewhere, uh, but displaying it through a browser tab with pure HTML5. And you can see, uh, you, can, you can interact with this the, the same way that you would interact with, uh, uh, with Photoshop anywhere else. Uh, we've also done a partnership with Citrix, so that if any of you are using Citrix, the Citrix receiver is also built in here and displays this via HTML5 as well, too. And so you can access the applications that you have within your firewall uh, right now uh, with this device. So these are a few things that you can do uh, with the Chromebook that will give you access to all of these, uh, um, all of these things. Um, so I want to talk about a couple of things that, that you, you see that are kind of behind the scenes here. The first thing is management. So Dave was mentioning about the cloud console uh, that, that we have for, for devices. The Chromebook is one of the first devices built from the ground up to be easily managed um, from the cloud. And so you're able to actually manage all of your users, all of your applications, your devices, and your policies from one central cloud console. Um, and that comes with the Chromebooks for Enterprise product. Um, we, with, with, with what we've seen, we think we're able to actually bring down the total cost of ownership of the desktop by 60 or 70% because of the combination of the Chromebook and the management console that's out there. Well, the second thing is, I'm about to do something that I would never do with any other device. So I have this, uh, this Chromebook here. This is actually one of my corporate laptops. This is something you'll, you'll see I've actually logged in with my corporate account. I'm going to go and I'm actually going to give it to somebody here in the audience, to Keith. <laughs> so you would never picture, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> so you would never picture doing that with any other device. I'd be freaked out about the, the, the data that's on the device. Um, is it backed up? Is he going to be able to get access to it? Um, all of that stuff. And with a Chromebook, the Chromebook is virtually stateless. There's very little information that's on the device. And the information is essentially just cached information that's also strongly encrypted on the device. So think about how many people lose laptops at, a, uh, at an airport or get stolen at some point in time. You're impervious to that. Any Chromebook is your Chromebook. And it's, it really changes the model and puts it on its head. Another thing you can start to think about is pooling of devices. You don't have to have one device for every user. You can have a pool of devices for, for users. Uh, we've seen that, for example, in classroom usage, uh, where you can have a group of 30 Chromebooks uh, that are used by multiple classes that come into a classroom. And we've seen that in business environments where not everybody needs a laptop at all times. So, um, it really changes kind of the model of what, uh, of what the desktop is all about. We've talked to you today about how you can make the user experience better and more invisible using a Chromebook, how web-based applications could be actually more powerful than anything uh, out there, and how, how a Chromebook can actually be a lot more manageable than anything you have out there. But the bigger message is that this is one of the first fundamental changes in the notion of the desktop in nearly 30 years. And what I hope is that 
Years from now, you'll be at some conference somewhere, and somebody will stand up here on stage and say, do you remember the first time that you saw a Chromebook? So thank you all. Enjoy your Chromebooks, and thank you for your time. <laughs>